Hello, my name is Eric Saturn, and welcome again to another episode of Shooting with the Baron. We're going to be showing you how to set up an SCA archery field. Uh, the standards are going to be specifically North Shield standards, um, mainly because, well, that's the kingdom that I'm in. But in the SCA in general, their only main difference is going to be some kingdoms uh, might use the societal standards, which is between specifically when you want to do a left and right limit, you can do either a 30 to a 45 degree angle in North Shield. We always use 45 degree angles. So I'm going to use everything at 45 and you can change it depending upon the kingdom that you're in or the standards that are acceptable. So the thing that we're going to start off with is the shooting lines. Okay, we always shoot mainly between the 20, 30, and 40 yard targets. So that's going to be the standard on which we're going to start with any archery field. So, set up three targets. Okay, we're going to start and we're going to draw a line. Just like that. That is going to be where our targets are stationed. From there, you want to make sure you step back uh, 20 yards. And we're going to draw that like I said, I'm drawing backwards. Not bad. Then we also have 30 yards will be the next one. And 40 yards. All right, pretty good. Those are going to be the three standard yard ranges that pretty much any shoot is going to occur. Now, you can actually do a 10 and a 5, okay? Now, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Now, the 10 and 5 are going to be more of what's known as a specialty shoot. Some specialty shoots are going to be if you got a kid's shoot, if you got a special um, crossbow shoot, anything like that, you're going to get that when there's going to be uh, pretty much any bows of between 20 or 25 or less that are going to be shooting. So you want to make sure you have ranges closer to make sure that the, those capabilities are given as an option. And like I said most of the time it's going to be for mostly kids. Whenever you do this, you always want to make sure that this area, which is going to be 40 to the targets, needs to be exactly 40 in the back open. Okay? Whenever you're shooting, you always want to have a one to one ratio on 50 targets or less, 50 yard targets or less. So if you got 40 yards here, you got 40 yards in the back. 50 yards, 50 yards. Anything over 50 is a one to 1.5 ratio, okay? Or one at yeah, 1.5. So if you're going 100, you would have 150. I will explain those types of shoots, specifically what I was calling a clout shoot yesterday. I'll explain that later. But right now, when you set up your first field, this is the way you're going to set it up. 20, 30, 40. And then from here, you want to go out 45 degrees.
Same thing on this side. From there, you go back 40 yards. Okay, why do we have this left and right 45 degree limit? I'm sure some of you know, some of you don't know. There's a thing called a ricochet aspect. In the military, we always classify it as either a hard ricochet or a soft ricochet. A hard ricochet would be like if you were shooting and a bullet hit a rock or a piece of metal, it hits it and it immediately goes back. It has the same force as um, the arrow going, or the bullet going in, it has the same force as it retreating. That's a hard target. A soft target is where it would hit something soft, like a berm or a rubber tire or something like that, where it would absorb part of the energy. The same thing here. What we have is whenever you're shooting from a 40 yard target, you want to make sure that if you miss it, the arrow is going to go the same distance as you're aiming for the target. So, example is this. Your target is right here. You're trying to shoot the target. If you miss the target, your arrow is going to go the same distance back as it was to the target. That's why you have 40 yards and back. Now, the reason it goes to the side, 45 degrees, it's as if you hit something, say, strangely enough, there was a metal frame holding the target, and your arrow hits the metal frame, it'll hit and then go sideways or back the same amount. So if you take this, it would almost be like an arc. So if it comes back, it's gonna come back 40 yards. If it goes this way, it's going to go 40 yards. 40 yards up, 40 yards over, it's a 45 degree angle. Makes sense? So this is the standard setup for a simple 20, 30, and 40 degree. You will always start doing the 45 degree angle from the 40 yard line. If you have a 50 yard line, then you're going to do it from the 50 yard. You always do it from the furthest yard line. Very simple on that. So I talked about hard targets and I talked about soft targets. Now, say for example, you don't have enough of a range. What you can do is you can put what's known as a backstop. Certain things that can be backstops are hay bales. You can have a uh, cloth that hangs down that will stop the arrows from going past. You can have a dirt berm. You're going to see that a lot in a lot of shooting ranges. You're going to also have like an indoor range, a whole bunch of uh, compressed material that's going to make sure that the arrows don't go all the way through. They might go partially through, but they're still not going to go well into the 40 yard area. So if you have a backdrop that will help stop, you don't need the full 40 yards. Before we go to the next part, let's talk about some certain types of shoots that can be done. Okay, in the SCA we have the ICAP. All right, that's always going to be pretty much at the 20, 30, 40, 20, 30, and 40 yard range. Now, let's say you want to do, you can do that with regular recurves, long bows, crossbows. You want to try something new, try something special. Like one of the events we have, we have a torchlight shoot. Now, here's where marking your range comes into play. You need to mark the range to include either, you can have flags, you can have colored tape, you can have chem lights, which is always really good. You can have, also have torches. Those are always good. Uh, with the, those solar cell yard uh, walkway path lights are really good. Therefore, they stick in the ground. They're not open. You can see them during the day, but at night, when the sun comes out, the light comes on, it's very easy to mark the targets, things like that. 
So you always need to mark all major areas to include each line These are not a requirement, but it also helps specifically when if you need, if you're losing an arrow, you can go and pretty much go, okay, if this is right here, more than likely the arrow's not going to go much past this area. Helps you find arrows. Streamers, everything like that, like we mentioned. The other types of shoots that can come into play are going to be uh, marching shoots where you can actually, instead of just having a target, you actually have a full form figure of a person. Um, you have targets, I get targets that actually have colored paint in them, so when you puncture them, they bleed a different color, so you can score them differently. That's an option. Everything that you do here is limited on your imagination and space. Okay. Now, real quickly, what we'll talk about next is safety. For safety, I'll use red. All right. Whenever you want to, and this is part of marking the territory to make sure everyone knows where things are, so everyone's safe. You want to make sure that whenever you enter the range area. You always enter from above the furthest target line. Okay, so people will come in. They'll come in this way, and then they will go to whatever line that you tell them. Everyone can only be on one line at a time. So everyone's either on twenty, everyone's on thirty, or everyone's on four. There's always the ratio of how many people per marshal. That comes down to safety again. You got a real good experienced marshal. They're going to make sure they're going up and down the line behind the people. Checking everything out, making sure their equipment's good, making sure everyone has straddled the line. Straddling the line means when you're on the line here, One foot is behind the line, one foot is over the line. Now you know for sure everyone is on the line, no one is trying to shoot behind, which could be uh, potentially have the arrow go sideways, have people get injured. So you always want to make sure the line is straddled. Some uh, good ratios for that is one to 10. One good experienced marshal for every 10 shooters. Okay, let's talk about the five and 10. Those are gonna be, like I said, more towards like kids shoots and everything like that. Some people say one to five. I go with a ratio of one to one or one to two at the most. If it's a one to two ratio, what I do is I stand in the middle, one's over here, one's over here, and I tell them, all right, you shoot first, then you, then you, then you. So each one shoots one arrow at a time, and I can focus and make sure both of them are safe by allowing two people to shoot. Like I said, for me, that's what I use for kids, makes things go quicker and safer. Mm, let's see. Okay, we're talking about safety. Everyone is always a safety person. Someone sees something safe. The thing you always yell is... Hold. All right? Doesn't matter if you're like, oh, well, I thought I saw something. Oh, that was stupid. No, there was nothing stupid about it. Everyone wants to be safe. Everyone wants to shoot. Gee, it takes an extra six seconds. Everyone will get over it. Just make sure if you see something, call a hold, 
ask the marshal, hey, is this okay? I'm not sure. The marshal will say, yep, it's still good to go. Uh, we're still good to go. Everyone continue to shoot. And everyone continues to shoot. Or it's like, oh, you're right. Hold on. Let me get that out of the way. Such as, hey, there's something moving there. Is that a snake? Oh, you're right. It's a snake. Everyone get off the line. We're going to get a stick. We're going to move it. Oh, it's, it's a bad snake. Everyone, we're shutting down for a little bit until the snake leaves. Stuff like that. Another thing is going to be, like, say, for example, well, we live in North Dakota. We get gopher holes like crazy. If you see a gopher hole, say there's a gopher hole here, here, and right here. Now, some of them are small enough that it's not going to be too bad. Some of them are going to be big. Some of them are going to be holes that another animal's tried to dig out of. That's when you take one of these flags again and just stick it right there. Make sure everyone knows, hey, there's a hole here, there's a hole here. All right, now everyone knows, gives a nice little safety brief. Everyone can continue to fire. There we go. One of the things that we also use a lot, a lot around here for a backdrop is bales. Bales can be really good when they start deteriorating. Arrows can go in there. If you got the small barrel, small bales, it's not too bad. If you got the big round ones, you can lose a lot of arrows. Another thing is there's going to be sometimes animals in those bales. So just go there, be careful, let everyone know, hey, these are old bales. There might be some snakes, mice, or anything like that. Just be aware, mainly because some people come there with not fully leather boots or anything like that. So you're going to have some people that have thin shoes or whatever. Nice courtesy, they have a problem. All right, I'll get my arrows later. Or take a stick and just beat on the bales a bit to make any type of animal potentially run away or crawl away or hide, whatever. There's always going to be things you can do to keep things safer. And that's just gonna come with experience marshaling other areas where it's like, hey, I never thought about using uh, that inflatable foam. Hey, I got a whole bunch of car empty cardboard boxes. Just shoot some spray foam in there, let it expand. Hey, those are some nice, easy targets. Didn't think about that. Every time you do one of these, go help, shoot, ask questions. Everyone's going to come up with a new idea, everything like that. Uh, like I said before, one of them is that uh, night shoot. We first tried it with torches. Thought it was going to be a good idea. Did not turn out to be as good as we thought because there was a lot of wind. So the flames didn't give out as much light. The next year we used the solar lights and we put more of them out there. Wasn't a problem after that. So one time you do it and it didn't turn out that great, that doesn't mean you can't try again with something different. See if it gets better. All right, I'm gonna wipe this off. some shoots that are over 50 yards. The one that I like to do is called a clout shoot, okay? A clout shoot is anything where you have a target usually between 80 and 100 yards. So, and it can be anything. It can be a big circle or uh, one of them was there was a castle wall and what we had was we had shields and people and they were just out of cardboard and they were lying on the ground. So they were just different targets. And the goal was to shoot over the castle and try and land onto one of the targets. Now you can also do a cloud shoot where you have say a ring of bales and you want to try and shoot 
and land inside. And you can say whoever lands inside will get five points. Everyone who lands on the bale Two? Yeah. It's supposed to be a two. Two points. It's like a bad six. And everyone on the outside gets one point. That's what you want it to do. Okay? Now, whenever you have anything like this, does anyone remember what the ratio is? It's one to one and a half. Now, why do you say, well, below 50 is one to one, over 50 is one to one and a half? The reason is for this. When you're shooting farther, you usually have to also have a stronger bow sometimes. There's going to be more things that's going to come into play. So you want to be extra safe. Okay? So if you're shooting at 100, and all of a sudden you're shooting up like this and you let it go and all of a sudden your target is right here and you're shooting here you're like oh crap it has it's very hard to have accurate control farther away so you you need a bigger variance to ensure safety so this is why this is a hundred and this is a hundred and fifty. Same thing from here. But again, from here, it is another 45 degrees. One of the things you're going to realize is when you start doing these types of shoots, you're going to shoot up and you're like, hey, this is great. And then all of a sudden there's going to be a wind gust. It's not windy down here. Hey, what, you're going to catch some wind up there. Or you're shooting in an area where there, you shouldn't have any trees or anything like this. If you shoot up, you want to make sure you're able to see the arrow during the full flight up and down. So if you're shooting up, and it's coming up, and it's looking good, and then all of a sudden, the wind hits it. You want to make sure that you have that area covered for the 150 again, just in case. You might say at that point, wow, there's a lot of wind. I need to really, and you're shooting this way. I need to compensate. All right, the wind is blowing, so I need to shift left. So you decide, wow, that's a lot. I'm going to shoot this way. And all of a sudden you shoot and there's no wind. Okay, that's going to come into play where you're trying to readjust to compensate for something, and now all of a sudden that's not having an effect on it. This is why you have the one to one and a half ratio. It's hard to control, things could occur. This is why you also need to make sure that once you go through, you walk the area every time to make sure nothing is there, no animals or anything like that. It should be pretty easy to understand. Strangely enough, that's it. Everything that comes into play after that is going to be making sure that your equipment's good, the bows are good, the arrows are good, you know all the commands, 
the commands are going to be given to you by the marshal in charge. They're a marshal in charge. Whatever the marshal says, you can be like, oh, wait a minute, we've never done it like this before. It doesn't matter. The marshal's in charge. The marshal has full control. You listen to the marshal. If not, okay, uh, don't shoot. There's nothing that says you have to. But these are the two main aspects. The normal shoots and then the specialty shoots where it's gonna be like over 50 or more. There's going to be other shoots pertaining to like, hey, we need to shoot through a wall and there's only just that much of a hole you can uh, cover it up with paper so whenever it hits, you know that you get a point. Everything here, hopefully you got it like the, like I said, the spray foam or something where the tips are not going to go in and have a hard time coming out or break or come loose. These are all specialty shoots. There's an advancing, advancing army shoot where you there's a set of targets out, you start shooting from a distance, you shoot three arrows, all right, then you go up to the next yard, and you shoot, and they're closer, and again closer, and, a clan, and again closer. Okay, you can do it like that. You can do different types of moving shoots. One could be, all right, everyone at the 20 is going to be, uh, ah, that hurts. Everyone is going to sit down, so they can either sit on a leg, or sit on their butts, and at 20 yards, they're going to sit and shoot. At 30, they're going to Ooh, all right. They're going to go down to one knee and shoot, and then at 40, they're going to. Stand and shoot. There is no specific requirement except for ICAC where this is the standard shoot that's going to happen every single time. The only thing that is standard is going to be the minimal safety requirements, which is as I showed you how to set up a field. All right, 40 to 40, if it's 20 to 20, if it's going to be 50 to 50. 45 degree angles to either side, and everyone is going to make sure that they're uh, watching out for everyone else. They see something unsafe, they call a hold. Anything over 50 has a bigger safety uh, window. You go through, make sure everything is done. You explain very clearly the type of shoot you're trying to do, and trust me, Everyone's going to have a good time, whether it's during the day or the night, whether it's a big fight, a big open field, or a small little range that's indoors because, hey, it's winter, we can't always shoot outdoors. Make it fun. Some of the games that I've seen played are things like Balloons, you shoot at balloons. That's always a nice one to get people comfortable. Also for kids, that's nice. Uh, I've seen playing cards put on there. I think the other S was wrong. Yes, the other S. Okay. So you can say, all right, we're going to be doing a 21. Whoever can get the highest hand to 21 without going over wins, or you can try and get the best hand. Hey, I got three, uh, uh, three of a kind. Hey, I got a full house, anything like that. Whatever you want to do is up to you, or you can have a sponsored shoot. One of the shoots that I love the most is called the concentric circle shoot. And that is where you got 10 circles I'm not going to do all 10. 
And what you have to do there is everyone has to shoot and get somewhere in the target. So your first one is right here. All right, you're good. You get to go again. The next one is this one doesn't count. So you have to get the next smaller circle. All right, you get right here. That's good. You get to keep on going. You shoot again. Then all of a sudden, whoop, I got right here. You're out. This way, you're always trying to hit a smaller and smaller target. You can do the exact same thing opposite, but usually a lot of people get out very quickly. You get from 10 shooters to two shooters right away. So I'm not a big fan of that one. All of this, like I said, is up to your imagination on what you want to do. So even if you're not an archer or a marshal, correction, but you want to do something, get with a marshal and say, hey, marshal, I want to do something like this. How can we do it? Get with them. And they'll say, all right, let's go through it and see what it is. And then you can sponsor it. So you can be, hi, I'm Lady Cassandra. I'm from this group, and I am sponsoring this shoot today. And this shoot is, we got a whole bunch of flags. And we're going to say a color, and you have to hit that colored flag. And then, so you can have it, uh, name it the Cassandra flag shoot, that type of thing. Don't just have to be like a participant. I mean, you don't have to just be a marshal. You can be a participant with an idea. Get that idea and talk to a marshal. And easily, most of the time, a marshal can help you set up a shoot that you really want to do or that you want to sponsor. And I really want to push sponsoring shoots because all the time people come up and go, hey, we have the golden apple shoot over here. We had like 43 people at the last Bardic Blades shoot in the golden apple shoot because everyone shot with a crossbow. Most people had never not shot with a crossbow, but it was pretty easy. It was new, it was exciting, and word travels. So, as I said, Whatever you want to do, it's up to your mind. The most important thing, though, is when you set it up that you're safe, you know the requirements, and you hopefully get some support from other marshals to make sure everyone has a good time. But when you're in charge, you are in charge. Simple as that. All right, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, it was a nice, quick class. I will keep you guys up to date on other classes that I will be teaching. Uh, nothing planned for tomorrow, so you don't have to see this space again every day. So, thank you very much. Talk to you later.